James Sylvester from JPS Reliability. You may have seen a few of my posts on LinkedIn through my um, web blog, the seasonanalyst.guru. Um, I've also just published a book, um, Enhancing System Reliability Through Vibration Technology, which is a practical source like book. Um, and also from this May, I'm pleased to announce that I am an RMS trainer with the Reliability Training Institute. So to support the books that are being published and also my new additional role with RMS Reliability as a trainer, I'm going to be sharing five case studies, one a week. Um, so this week is number one. As an introduction to these case studies, I'm going to show a selection of issues from various clients and problems I find, how we were to determine the actual failure calls, the, the mechanism and, and the mode of detection um, of the common failure so we can prevent them from happening again. One thing I see which does affect reliability a lot is that you have reliability engineers in design and manufacturing where they look at the physics of the system and how things all work together. They design a system with a certain reliability, it's put into production, and if we do not know how to run that machine correctly to keep the reliability up or how to maintain it, then that's how it affects it all goes downhill. So for a plant to be truly profitable, they need to link the two together quite, quite well. Um, and that's what I've been doing with Dr. K at the Academy. But this is where we're trying to integrate the reality of what we see in a workshop floor to the, the, the theory, the science behind reliability and get them to work together. Very briefly about myself, um, I started as a machinist fitter um, or millwright, did that for 10 years in various mechanical um, sites, chemical plants, what have you. And then in the year 2000, I had the opportunity to move into condition monitoring. So it's been 20 years now. I have a look back since, had some great opportunities, worked in Australia for a little bit as well. Um, so yeah, I'm just like at that point, I might like to share knowledge and, and, and increase what people know about reliability and condition monitoring. So these case studies, this very show, we try and make the theory into the practical. Got five case studies to go through. Today's is electrical motor terminal connection defect. So we got called to this site. Um, we had some old historical data on this, and it was about one millimeter per second RMS. Jumped up to 3.9, which I suppose ISO isn't bad, but there's a huge change in condition. Went back two days later, and it's up to 8.8 .8 millimeters per second RMS velocity. In between these two days, someone else has come in and done analysis, and, and they said the battery driving bearing was hot. I said, bearing, change of bearings. So we wanted to get some more data, you know, behind our decision. So this is the velocity spectrum where we can see, which wasn't there before, is a 100 hertz peak. Then what we did, we took some um, peak view data and lots and lots of electrical noise, which peak view does tend to pick up. But this was the change in the pattern. You see we have lots of 100 hertz series and also 25 hertz harmonics. So this was a change. To look at the data differently, we put in a circular plot. So we ensured the RPM was spot on, 100%. Circular plot, and you could see that there's four pulses per, per rotation of the shaft. Coincidentally, it's a four pole motor. This is the acceleration data, um, where we have two mounds of activity here, and this is side bounded by 100 hertz. And it's at this point where we need to use your common sense as such. So while I was there, taking the vibration readings, touching, smelling, feeling, and yes, the, the, the side of the motor was hot, but this is electrical anomaly. This is a really large motor up on a pedestal. So I managed, as I clamped the motor, to touch around and fill, and the actual power cable going into the motor was hot to the touch. So then I said to them, well, I've got an electrical defect. It's picking up a vibration. You can touch it and feed it. And as if the motor was, hum, bum, 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 was bumping, missing the heartbeat as such. So it's not mechanical. 
your bearings are okay, something electrical is causing the problem, some connection, and the recommendation was to check all the terminations. So they took the terminal box off and they found one of the phases had got a little hot. <coughs> um, I asked them how long these motors have been in, only been in three months. So straight away you think, well, why did that connection get bad in three months? Now, it is great that vibration picked up this, but you had to use your human senses and a bit of common sense to work out what component was actually causing the issue. But here's an image I got off my good friend Austin Dunn from the IRT training. Um, so if I had a thermal camera on this particular job, then if you scan the motor, this is what I would have seen for sure. This shows you here a terminal box at 105 degrees, 30 degrees ambient. And one important thing to note is here, as the temperature comes down here, it reduces. So you know it's not overloading. There's a problem here. And this image here, you can actually probably say it's a connection up there. So this is sort of to say, don't just use vibration. Don't just use thermography. Don't just use ultrasound. You've got to use them all together. And that's how, if I did have a thermal camera, you'd have picked it up bang straight away. But through vibration, um, we are, I, I did find out what was causing it. So when we took stood back <coughs> and we tried to work out what was actually happened to it, we said, well, what, what was the failure of course? Well, three month old motor, an experienced electrician, unfortunately, couldn't have done the connection up to the correct torque. So you can say the failure of course was human error through installation. Now the failure mechanism, <coughs> that was high resistive connection. So as those plates were loose and the molecules and starting to move, getting the little friction and that high resistive connection increased the temperature and the mode <coughs> it was detected through temperature increase, noise and vibration. Now, so the summary is an incorrect electrical connection, human error, in the motor cable to my box, initiate heat generation, that in turn cause vibration and noise and the motor to run really bad. Now, this was detected and occurrence of a negative functionality event was prevented. That means it didn't stop mid-production and cause a big bat lock. It wasn't negative an negative event. So with this knowledge of condition ones in here, <coughs> we've highlighted why the issue occurred. So we can look at ensuring that people follow procedures. And also on the size of this motor, it's probably a double check on connections. Um, but it managed this company to put a quick plan in place to mitigate causing a stop in production, to manage that shutdown, to change the motor out, because they knew they had to change the turbine box and just change the motor. So, as I said before, I'm James Sylvester, JPS. Um, so, we can help you with upskilling, upskilling your team in mentoring and pra the practical side of how you actually do on site, contract reliability services. As I say, now I'm very proud to say we're a Mobius Institute accredited trainer, working with RMS Training Institute, and we're delivering the training for self placed online as we're doing a lot of now and I'm um, citing classroom when, when we can get back to that in vibration analysis. This is a slide I like to put in which shows you the um, the technologies <coughs> and how they're all interlinked. So these are the four main technologies. Um, obviously we've got electrical, signature analysis and we also have sound analysis but these are the main four which people use. And you can see the type of defects and how they're all interlinked to each other. A little bit about myself. Well, me and the other chap, 40 years experience combined. Um, we're from the practical side, worked our way up with all the theory and all the training, um, got registrations and obviously we're all forever of the book. Now, please, I um, encourage you to go onto the website and check out this science. Um, it is very, very... Um, high level science but um he's got it bang on and it, it does fit in perfectly with reliability and maintenance and, and, and the practical side so thank you very much for um, watching this first one 
um, I say we've got four more to come and um, hopefully you're finding them informative. <laughs>